This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so we had started uh, this induction part. In the last class, we had learned uh, what is called induction and how induction happens generally. And, and the famous law of induction given by Faraday, we had learned that. So that is uh, EMF induced emf e is equal to minus d phi by dt that means the rate of change of the flask so this is actually time rate of change of the flask okay time rate of change of the flask that is magnetic flask will give you induced emf and we had discussed that day if you can see this screen the minus sign was not given by Faraday. Faraday only told that time varying magnetic flux can produce induced EMF. But in, uh, this is Lenz. A German physicist Lenz had given this sign, minus sign. It has a physical significance. Today, we'll learn what is this minus sign meaning. And this is given in a separate law that is called Lenz's law. So today, mainly our topic will be Lenz's law and motional EMF. So let us start our uh, discussion. So look, we had learned that the Faraday's law of induction states that the emf induced will be directly proportional to the time rate of change of magnetic flask this part and this was this sign was given by scientist lens okay so that's why this law is called lens's law okay this is german scientist uh, so today we'll discuss what is lens's law and see this Lenz's law actually is supporting or it is the outcome of energy conservation law. The basis of this Lenz's law is actually the conservation of energy. So we'll discuss how Lenz's law supports or it is based on conservation of energy. First, first let us see what is called uh, Lenz's law. So Lenz's law states that the polarity of the induced EMF is such that it tends to produce a current, it tends to produce a current which opposes the change in the flask, sorry, change in magnetic flask that produced it. So what does it mean? Let us write once again the Faraday's law of induction, then it will be uh, clear to you. So, this is magnetic flask. Time Sir, good evening. Magnetic flask. Time rate of. Good evening, Nikhil. Very good evening. Welcome after a long time. So, this is the combination of Lenz's law and Faraday's law, actually. But as a whole, it is. It is actually known as Faraday's law of induction. Faraday's law of induction. Okay, so this is called Faraday's law of induction. In this Faraday's law of induction, if you look here, this minus sign, what does this mean? This minus sign means that how this changes is in the opposite way of this change okay this is the actual result 
this is result emf this is called induced emf induced cardly induced emf okay this, this is called induced emf and see this minus sign is stating uh, it is actually stated in the lenz's law that the polarity of the induced emf the polarity of induced emf will be such that it will oppose the cause of the cause of the induction itself what does that mean it means it will be opposite to the like the change in the induced emf will be opposite to the change in the magnetic flux that means if your induced emf increases then this uh, uh, change in the flask will be de de decreased or reduced because it will be opposing to increase in the change in the flask let me tell you here uh, in this situation you know we have seen uh, when in magnetic north pole see bar magnet we have a bar magnet we have seen in the previous experiments in this chapter that when we take a bar magnet and the north pole of the bar magnet towards the coil suppose this is a circular coil a single turn anyway when you take it towards the coil then what happens the current induced in this or emf induced will be in this coil in such a way that the motion of this uh, bar magnet will be opposed so you might be thinking sir this lenz's law is saying that change in the flask is opposed but you are saying here the motion of the north pole is or the magnet itself is opposed how is it correlated yeah it is correlated because see this bar magnets will be producing uh, magnetic field lines so when they passes through this coil okay so we, we know what is flask is b into a b is the magnetic field lines and a is the area if they are perpendicular to each other that means uh or in general phi b magnetic flask magnetic flask is written as b a cos of theta b a cos of theta by dot product b dot a okay a is the area vector of the loop and b is the magnetic field okay and this cos theta cos theta is actually the angle between b and the area vector okay the angle between b and area area vector okay so this is the theta now look if my b is increased so in this case if you want to change the flask if you want to change the flask so what you have to do i'll clean this portion okay this also so induced emf will be created by changing flask so flask i know b a cos of theta so i can change this one i can change this one i can change this one so anything can vary so which will produce a magnetic like induced emf so look when the b this bar magnet is just move in or it is when it is very much away from the coil the number of field lines passes through the coil will be lesser when you like then when you bring it near okay so that's why when you bring it near and near you might have noticed or you might have read it and remember that the deflection in the galvanometer was much more than when it was at far okay so what does that mean when you are bringing near with the motion then your flask is more then your change in flask also will be more okay so what does this lenz's law says you know the lenz's law is saying that 
if the north pole of the bar magnet is brought near the coil so this induced emf will be in such a way that it will create a current and that current you know that current in turn will create a magnetic field okay you know we have already discussed a current carrying loop can act as a dipole or a bar magnet this itself actually if this is a current direction then look this side this face of the coil will be actually north pole of, of the bar magnet so each coil can act as a bar magnet or a dipole magnetic dipole so this side will be acting as south pole okay so look in this case the current is induced in the anti clockwise direction anti clockwise direction so when your north pole is brought near always you have to think that the current in the coil will be induced in the anti clockwise direction which direction in the anti clockwise direction and see it is nicely presented here if you look this why anti clockwise because if the current is anti clockwise then see this face so suppose this is a loop like this so it has front face and it has a rear face also rear face coil has two faces if it is vertically standing it has two faces you just think that you have a cycle rim and that cycle rim is if you just keep near the bar magnet so this face is called front face okay this face is called front face and the back is called actually the rear face okay so if if the motion of the bar magnet has to be opposed then obviously the front face has to act as a north pole of the north pole as a north pole see look what happens here when the when the bar magnet is brought near the coil or you are just in a motion with towards the coil what happens there will be a change in the flask so induced emf will be there and induced emf will create a current e by r according to ohm's law and that current direction will be anti clockwise direction see this is anti clockwise direction ac w anti clockwise direction okay and this anti clockwise direction of y that is to produce a north pole okay north pole in the near, in the front face or near the north pole of the bar magnet such that it will be rippled okay it will be rippled bar magnet will be rippled and it will not be allowed to move inside the or through the coil okay or towards the coil so all right so north pole means anti clockwise current see here it is nicely depicted in this figure so you have north means n so look your n this is going this way right and this is going this way okay these two points so that means your current is actually anti clockwise direction okay look here and when the north pole was brought back or withdrawn with a motion that time what we have seen in the galvanometer we have seen opposite direction deflection okay when north pole was brought in inside the coil the deflection was some direction suppose right direction and when it was brought like withdrawn with a motion then the deflection was this way left toward that means the polarity in that case was opposite okay see in this case why see what will be the direction of the current in the loop then in the second case when the north pole is withdrawn with the motion so it has to be the current direction has to be clockwise cw means clockwise and acw means anti clockwise why clockwise because i have to stop the bar magnet if you want to stop the bar magnet or the or oppose the motion of the bar magnet then obviously you have to have south pole in the like induced in the uh 
like uh, front face of this coil okay or in other words when we see from the magnet the front face of the coil has to have south pole in this coil okay south pole in the front face so that it will be attracted by the coil okay it is now it is it is actually moving in the opposite direction or away from the coil but see according to Lange's law the polarity of induced emf will be such that it will produce a current in the coil in such a way that it will produce a south pole in the front face of this coil and that south pole will be attracting the north pole towards it and it will try to oppose the motion away from the coil so this is what is depicted in this case see in this coil okay so this is that's why this minus sign is given d phi by d phi, phi b by dt so the induced emf will be opposite to the cause of cause of the induced emf what is the cause of induced emf the change in the flask so when it is going away that means there will be a huge change in the plus but the south pole will be attracting towards it so that the speed of going away will be lesser than a certain value okay it will be lesser than certain value or the speed will be reduced okay and you know when it is going away see south pole to produce to produce north pole in pole in a loop in a loop what you need you need to passes a current in the anti clockwise direction need to pass a current in the anti clockwise direction that we have already learned and demonstrated and this c if you want to produce south pole that means your current has to be current has to be in the clockwise direction look the s shape south c this direction i can increase so this i can just think the direction of the current okay which will produce a south pole in the front face of this coil see north is like this so it is going like this so current is anti clockwise and in this case current is clockwise okay so in any case any loop if, if you have been given a loop like this and current is clockwise direction then which which pole will be created in this like front face of this coil it will be actually south pole because see the current is flowing in the clockwise direction okay it is very easy to remember south means clockwise you just draw it and then you can get the direction of current okay north pole means like this okay like this so it will go like this okay and the clockwise direction so i i i hope i have like uh explained up to your understanding uh, i hope you have understood this if if there is any doubt or anything in this lenges law then you can ask me the, uh, the otherwise i'll go to this conservation law like conservation of energy how this lenges law satisfy uh like satisfies the conservation of energy so nikhil then deepa selvi and there is a new person here i think bishal um if you don't have any doubt then i will go to the next topic if you have doubt please quickly tell me so do you understand the lenges law yes or no okay i'll just i'll just see whether you understand okay i'll i'll just uh so this is a this is an example problem from your book itself uh if you have the 
book please close it don't see and tell me the answer you just see in this all the cases like there are figures see someone is see this one the figure one this this is a shape square uh, like rectangle shape loop it is just coming into the magnetic field so, so what will be the current direction in this loop this b this triangular loop is going away from the magnetic field and this is again going so this is another loop 3 it is also going away from the magnetic field okay so here the cross signs actually represent that the magnetic field this cross sign actually is signifying the magnetic field is normally or perpendicular to the plane of the paper and it is going into the plane of the paper so normally going into the going into the plane of the paper plane of the paper okay so this is the meaning of this cross signs over here and see the spacing and the pattern of this cross signs actually is very symmetric that's why this is a uniform magnetic field that means your magnetic field is not changing okay uniform b so what is changing is look i have told you that so here it is actually b is constant or uniform so if you want to induce some current in this loop so your flask has to change so b a cos of theta okay cos of theta so this has to see either b has to change so in this case b is constant right in all the cases okay b is constant or uniform then area See this area that means the uh, rectangular lip a b c d or this triangular a b c their area is not going to change this is also constant okay constant so then how do you change them flask actually you can do this if you just bring this a in motion if you have motion in the loop then there will be change in the flask so by motion okay motion in the loop <coughs> sorry motion of the loop <coughs> loops uh, motion of the loops uh, produce the change in the flask okay produce produce the change in the flask and that in turn will induce an emf which will create a current through the loop change in 5b okay so can anyone try which direction the current will be in this figure first figure who can try it nikhil or push uh, deepa uh, deepa yes bisal selvi anyone can tell me so what will be the direction of current in this loop is it a b c d etc or d c b a you have to think like whether it is clockwise or anti clockwise i hope you are getting the point okay look i'll just give you some hint I'll just give you some hint. Okay, so see the magnetic field which is there by the cross sign it is actually like this it is going into the plane of the uh, paper okay going into the plane of the paper okay 
and see when it is in motion the structure i'll just show you now here see this is the b over here okay in this case okay and i have a loop suppose uh, i'm just taking a circular loop just for your understanding and when i am just moving into this magnetic field so what will happen there will be increase in plus increase in plus okay increasing plus and that will produce a magnetic field okay that will be producing a magnetic field inside uh, like uh, like that will be sorry not magnetic field that will produce an induced emf so that emf will create a current in the loop so what lenz's law says it is saying that it will be opposite to the change the induced emf will be opposite to the change in the plus that means if i am bringing in this way induced emf will send a current through the loop such that it opposes to bring it here okay it will oppose or repel so how is it possible how is it possible okay so see in this when it is magnetic field is into the plane of the paper that means your north pole for this actually north pole for this magnetization you can just think of that it is down okay it is down okay it is in the down direction so opposing means you know the magnetic field created by your current has to be just opposite opposed means it has to oppose so this is actually your source and this is induced emf so this two has to be has to be opposite in direction okay now with this hint you can see like you can you can actually explain or you can tell me the answer your magnetic field source magnetic field is into the plane of the paper so it is going into the page so your induced emf has to be opposite so that it opposes the motion into the plane of the uh, into this region so okay so without much delay we'll just go to since you are not trying i'll just tell you one by one so in this case how should so in this first case how should the current be how would be the direction of the current see the current direction has to be a b c d that means anti clockwise direction okay so this way it has to be i'll explain you why it is so so when it is see you can write, uh, you can uh, you can actually uh, apply your right hand thumb rule and you look that your magnetic field in this case any anyway, it is going down b source one so it has to oppose means it has to go opposite way okay opposite way okay so and, and look this loop you just you just think the loop is in the plane of the paper loop is like this suppose plane of the paper and magnetic field is going this way this is the source magnetic field so my induced magnetic field has to be in this way okay in this way all right then only they will oppose each other that means the magnetic field created in this loop and the source magnetic field if you think they are in opposite direction then then you get the right direction of the current look here in this case you just apply your right and thumb rule for a loop or for a yeah for a loop you have to think okay or maybe for uh, straight conducting wire also your thumb will give you the direction of the current okay direction of the current then your magnetic field will be curling your fingers right like this so it will be in this direction isn't it so same thing if you just apply here also you'll get the direction of the magnetic field this actually we have already discussed okay if you don't remember 
you just please uh, just hear the previous lessons also so that you can find out the direction of the magnetic field for a for any current whether it is a loop if you if you are having a loop then you have to just grip the loop okay with your four fingers other than the thumb okay if you grip that then thumb thumb will give you the direction of the current okay guys you just try this you just try another one okay i'll just tell you the answers for the other case also so two in this second one nikhil do you want to try what is the direction of the current so these are very very important concepts if you don't understand this now you will not be able to crack competitive exam because many questions comes from this induction magnetism in matter and moving current moving charges and magnetism so these three chapters are very very important so if you don't understand here it is very difficult to uh, go further okay so for now i'm just discussing it but in our uh, quiz paper there will be such questions you have to answer over there and practice see this loop see in this loop actually it is going away going away so it has to be attracted in this way so attracted means your magnetic field also has to be in the same direction as the source magnetic field so your source magnetic field is into the paper okay into the paper so your magnetic field in this case also has to go into the paper so that this loop will be attracted by the magnetic field okay so induced emf or induced current will be such that in this a b c this triangular loop because it is going away it has to be attracted if you want to attract it okay it attract see this see attracting who, who is attracting actually attracting the source field source magnetic field is attracting the other magnetic field okay understand so if see attracting means what i am trying to say see if you have a bar magnet like this Suppose this is north pole, this is south pole. So if you just draw the magnetic field line here, like this, it is like this. So you have another bar magnet over here. If you have your north pole over here and south pole here, so how does magnetic field lines are like these are the magnetic? So these are opposing each other, right? Then you know in this place, the force of attraction, so they will repel each other. when they are opposite to each other actually they will repel each other they will repel okay so they will repel each other these two bar magnets will be repelling each other but look if you have your north pole here south pole here and then south pole here and north pole here look how it is happening the magnetic field lines here in this region you look in this region this way and in this case also look this way oh i have taken the same thing i'm sorry just i'll do opposite yeah so i just take this as north pole and this is south pole look the magnetic field lines are going with each other i'll just clean it and then write maybe so this is south this is north and another one you have north here and south here look what happens the magnetic field lines will be going like this and sorry again i have done wrong this is south this is north so this way also magnetic field will be like this so they will attract each other so these two will attract each other if the magnetic field lines are in the same direction so same thing here if you have to attract this abc loop your magnetic field direction will be in such a way that sorry the current direction or induced induced emf direction will be such way that the magnetic field has to be in the same into the plane of the paper you just think that this triangular loop is on the plane of the paper so how the current has to be flow like has to be passed or which direction current has to be so that the magnetic field will be induced downward direction okay so it is going with the v outward the magnetic field okay so to do that you know your magnetic so your current has to be current has to be in this direction clockwise direction okay clockwise direction 
So if the current is in this direction, then you get your induced EMF. I sorry, induced magnetic field downward, so that your source and this will be going in the same direction. So you know what is the answer? The answer is C A C B. So it has to be flowing clockwise direction. And in the previous case, what we had got, we had got anti-clockwise direction. Okay. So this one, in the similar manner, if you think it is going away, so obviously current has to be anti-clockwise, uh, sorry, clockwise direction. Okay. Clockwise direction. That means it is a b c d so current has to flow in this clockwise direction it is going away it has to be attracted so both the magnetic field has to be in the same direction if you want to have magnetic field uh, direction in, into the plane of the paper so your current has to be so this is one way to think you can think in another way also so north pole you can think north pole means anti clockwise direction okay anti clockwise current and south pole means South pole means clockwise current that way also you can think this is different ways these are different ways but anyway you have to learn it so these are the answers this was from your book itself so Nikhil is there any doubt to understand here how I have got the current direction in each loop it is very important to understand here if you don't say now it will be very difficult okay Anyway, if you are not uh, like uh, opening your mouth, uh, please try to understand by listening another time this lecture. And then also, if you don't understand, then you can ask me later. Okay. Okay. So I'll go to the next topic. Then. You, okay. So I had I had actually skipped the part that how. Lenz's law is satisfying the energy conservation. That part, let me tell you. See, I I told that in this case, look, when the bar magnet is brought near the coil, and see in the near face or the front face, north pole is induced, such that this north pole and this north pole they will ripple each other okay ripple each other if they ripple each other then it is see there <clears throat> so the person who is just moving into it he has to do some work what you have to do do some work okay and you know this work actually gets converted to so gets converted to electrical energy in this electrical energy in this coil okay that's why current is induced in the coil otherwise there is no connection in this uh, see so what so this is actually so you might be thinking sir this is very simple uh, wh how does this Lenz's law is supporting this? See, Lenz's law only told you that the induced EMF will be such that, or induced current will be such that the flask will be the change in the flask will be opposed by that uh, induced EMF or induced induced current. So suppose if it was not opposing, that means what? If it was not opposing then what it like what would have happened see suppose instead of having south uh, north pole here when the north pole is brought near the near the coil if the south pole is created that means if the current is in the clockwise direction what would have happened see then south pole will be created in the coil See, if you just give a gentle push to the magnet, it will itself, it will itself with, uh, like itself will move with an acceleration, with an acceleration because see there is a force of attraction over here, force of attraction by the coil because 
the south pole is created over here in the coil and south pole and north pole will attract each other okay they will attract each other north and south pole if they attract each other see the speed of the north pole the bar magnet if you just give a gentle push it will be speed will be increasing and it will not stop only okay it will not at all stop it will just go on go on go on so if it goes on then you will get more induced emf okay if the speed is more obviously you will get more change in the flask then you will get more induced emf that means you are getting more electrical current so you just give a toss and just leave it then you are getting enormous amount of uh, electrical energy without doing anything but see energy conservation law does not support that see energy cannot be created or energy cannot be created or destroyed so here you are see the system itself is creating an energy okay energy cannot be created but if the if this lenges law was not there if it is actually if we think this lenges law is wrong then what would have happened you would have created a par perpetual perpetual mission perpetual means you are increasing or you are lasting mission you just give a push it will create energy for infinite time without any expense of energy or expense of anything but that is not possible according to energy conservation law so that's why not the south pole when the north pole is north pole of the bar magnet is brought into or towards the coil there must be induced emf in the coil such that north pole is created in the front face of this coil such that this north pole and this bar magnet north pole they will repel each other and the person who is pushing it towards the coil has to do some work that mechanic and work will be converted into electrical energy so work is equivalent to energy you have learned that in the 11th standard work and energy equivalence so that mechanical energy actually gets converted to electrical energy so that's how we get here electrical energy because the we have to do certain work to push the bar magnet towards the loop okay now you might be thinking sir when the bar magnet the north pole of the bar magnet was withdrawn or taking uh, like taken away from the loop then why south pole here why not north pole here how does energy conservation law supports that the south pole will be created here same argument see the north pole is going away that means see lenges law is saying that that you have to <clears throat> have, have induced emf which will be opposing so e opposing the change in the flask the change in the flask change in the flask so when it is going away that means flask is reducing so you have to you have to oppose the reduction in the flask okay you have to so in this case according to lenges law in this emf will be in such a way that the motion of this bar magnet will be actually opposed by this induced emf how can it be done only when your south pole is created here or the current is in the clockwise direction in the loop then only the motion of this bar magnet which is ex till withdrawn and taken away from the loop will be stopped okay so see north pole will be attracted by south pole so there will be so you have to do certain work to take it away you have to do certain work do some work to take the bar magnet 
away okay so and that mechanical energy will be again in the, uh, like converted to electrical energy so here actually what is happening mechanical energy mechanical energy getting converted to converted into electrical energy okay so this is how so energy conservation law is supported or i can say in other way that the lenges law is based on energy conservation law okay so this is what uh, you can read in your book uh, nicely it is explained um, if you have any doubt you can ask me now or maybe in the next class also you can ask me or any time during our course okay so i'll just take up a simple example again oh i have this bar magnet look here okay okay just just a minute i'll maybe i'll take this alone in a single slide see in this case this is also an example problem this is also an example problem from your textbook so these are the see there are so there is a loop current carrying loop you know this is a wire this is an this is wire and this wire is connected to a parallel plate capacitor two plates are there uncharged okay uncharged parallel plate capacitor uncharged that means there is no charge see there is a plate a there is plate b which is connected to this wire okay all right so we have seen in the previous example that when we take the bar magnet away and like uh, or into the loop there will be induced emf if there is induced emf so the uh, this parallel plate capacitor will be charged okay but we don't know which plate will be positively charged and which will be which one will be negatively charged so that is what you have to find out here the question is which one see in this configuration see that means one bar magnet is see north pole is going into this direction and south pole is going in this direction okay from both direction this bar magnets are going okay going into or moving towards the coil now you have to tell what is the polarity what is the polarity of a and b so which will be positively charged and which will be negatively charged you can just you can just take only one at a time see this bar magnet is going so north pole is going so what will be the current direction if north pole comes what you have told north pole is coming so north pole means which direction current has to be which direction the current has to be anti clockwise direction right so the current has to be in this direction okay this is called anti clockwise direction look so you know in the capacitor current flows how if this is positive and this is negative so current will flow in this way only okay this way current will flow understand okay so just a minute uh, just a minute uh, no it is not in the anti clockwise direction it is actually i was a little wrong see you can just see your your see here your north pole has to be uh, in the front face here so if you have to have north face then your current has to go to a to, from a to b from a to b so a has to be positive and b has to be negative so if your this side has to be negative uh, a north pole so your current has to be uh, in this direction okay so your 
a to b yeah. a to b if the current has to be a to b okay in this case i'll just tell you once again see the see north pole has to be induced here in this direction in this place so you just you just apply your right hand thumb rule then it will be very easy so if your four, all four fingers are in this direction then only your thumb will be in this direction okay so this side will be north pole like this okay so your current has to go from a to b so current has to go from a to b so a to b means we know parallel plate capacitor when current goes from positive to negative it doesn't go like, like this way it goes from this way to this way okay so your a has to be positive here a will be positive plate and b will be negative plate so this is what was the uh, thing okay okay so you can just read again about this lenders law okay uh, so i i'll go up to 75 okay you just be patient okay i have another topic to tell you uh, teach you today that is called motional emf okay so i'll not talk, take very much like time i'll take only up to, i'll go up to 7 5 pm okay uh, dear students please be there up to the end okay see motional emf means i have already told this see faraday's law is saying that that emf will be induced when there is a time varying flask or flask is changing with respect to time so we know what is the expression of flask we know b a cos of theta okay i am taking a simple case when theta is zero that means your b vector and a vector area vector are parallel parallel to each other okay in that case the theta will be zero so if i take that case i have only two things i have b see this is the max maximum flask it said maximum flask will be this one for any case so i have two things to change the flask one is i can make my magnetic field time varying or maybe the area of the loop time varying area of the loop time varying that means your area of the loop can change or maybe your magnetic field can change but in the previous day i told already that changing the magnetic field will be very very difficult it will be costly and it will be uh, like there will be many other difficulties so the easiest way to change change the area of the loop change the area of the loop so if you if you change the area or i can say that if the area of the loop is changing with respect to time then also there will be rate of change of flask so there will be time varying flask and that time varying flask only will create a uh, or induce a, induce an emf okay so in this case look this is what uh see this motional electromotive force or motional emf is doing here see i have a rectangular uh you look these are actually conducting wires kind of a rail track okay these are laid like kind of a rail track you just think these are in the horizontal plane you just think this this is in the horizontal plane like this okay these are conducting wires okay and you look the current direction also has been given okay and another conducting wire you have just on top of this rail kind of a rail this is a conductor pq which is shown over here pq and what you know like this conductor is making the circuit complete if you have a battery over here so this will make a complete circuit this will make the circuit complete okay suppose the end of the battery the terminals of the batteries are i'll just clean it suppose you have a battery connected to this okay some 10 volt or 20 volt battery which will be passing a current through this 
so the current will go like this way okay as you see here okay like this in a rectangular loop and this guy so this pq guy is actually flexible to move okay it can move either this way or maybe it can move this way also this is flexible to move so if it is moving what is happening in this case you look carefully so if i if i just think that at any time t at sorry at any time t equals to t0 the initial configuration of this loop rectangular loop p q r s or in the other way p s r q this loop this is the configuration at at the beginning of the experiment okay at this time you know you have r q the side r q has a length x and this r s is l anyway this is not going to change this is not going to change this is always fixed so this side is always fixed okay this is not going to change only what will be changing is this x if i just move it uh, this way with a constant velocity what is changing is this x you know this x is changing so x is changing means the area also will be changing right area means what area of this rectangle means what length into breadth so area will be length into breadth at any time okay if this is changing so area also will be changing that is very simple okay let us see then what is the flask due to this motion of this coil look i i'll just see this you have to always remember and write also this d phi by dt okay so you have to find out phi b so what is the phi b at any time suppose this is d phi b or 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 let me say phi b only okay so phi b means area into the magnetic field so magnetic field is constant here uniform magnetic field you just see the configuration of this cross so you have you know the, here also the magnetic field into the into the plane into the plane into plane of paper okay into the perpendicular to the plane of the paper and that is going into the plane into okay and this loop is on the plane just on the plane so in this case the flask is actually b, b constant magnetic field into area what is the area length and breadth what is the length length is x what is breadth breadth is l so this is your flask but this flask is function of time function of time means what if this pq is moving with a velocity v then there will be time varying flask because your x is time varying okay let us see then what is flask this is minus d phi v e by dt so what is this minus let us skip like this so b is constant it will not come under de this derivative and l is also constant so what is there dx dt so x is changing so it is actually derivative you i hope you are you have already learned what is derivative and integration etc from your mathematics course so what you get from here look i get here this is a minus sign b l and this dx dt is v dx dt is v and there will be a minus sign you might be thinking why minus sign sir because this is the length x if if it is going this way as your time progress as your time see it was t is equal to zero suppose t is equal to five second it is here so x is changing in the opposite direction that means x is reducing as your t is increasing so any ratio will be negative if one among them see one among them is actually changing in the opposite way then this ratio will be negative see this is decreasing when this is increasing time is increasing time is increasing but your x is decreasing so that's why it is negative so the velocity will be negative okay in this case so this negative both negative will cancel each other and you will get b v l so what is the motional emf you get here that is b simply you need to know what is the constant magnetic field what is the breadth of this 
and what is the velocity of the conductor PQ then you can get the motional EMF finally what you get is B B L so this is actually not only for this rectangular coil it can be applicable in general when a conductor is moving or any any shape of area if it is a square if it is a circle or whatever it is when it is moving you can so if it is a circle you know you you can uh, like you can find out bvl so this will be l means 2 pi r okay kind of that you have to take and b will be given already magnetic field and b is the velocity of the coil so this is how if you know so this is this is a kind of formula you have to remember b b l uh, today time is uh, already over otherwise i would have uh, i would have taught you one example over here in your textbook okay we'll take up this in the next class so this is very important this is very important okay so this is uh, will be so this is actually the motional emf only so in this case actually the question is like this so it is uniform in the uniform magnetic field there is a uh, sp like there is a suppose a conducting rod question will be kind of that suppose there is a conducting rod it is just moving moving inside so it is a it is rotating okay moving in the sense it is rotating ha having an axis like if it is this part is fixed so this part is rotating in a uniform magnetic field then what is the uh, induced emf or what is the potential difference between this point suppose this is a and this is b what is the potential difference between this a and b so this will be a very important question uh, like important concept to understand and it is helpful to uh, solve many questions in competitive exam as well okay so we'll stop it here we'll uh, next day we'll first take up this uh, this example problem in the motional emf part and then we'll move forward okay okay then uh, see you on sunday bye for today Thank you for your presence.